Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCG Talk, back today with another video. In today's video, we're kind of going to go over the ProQuest stats as of week two. Um, I'm going to go over kind of the differences between week one and week two and what we're seeing. Uh, uh, Fab, The Fab website puts out a wonderful article every week kind of showing how the ProQuest seasons have gone. And what I've done is I've just taken the, um, the graphics that show kind of like the percentage of players and then percentage of top eights, percentage of wins. And we're going to compare the, the two from week one to week two. So that kind of gives you all a good idea of like what the meta looks like, what's going on and stuff like that. So for this, um, the percentage of overall players from week one, right? So when, during week one, we saw a huge, obviously like Bravo star of the show. Basically it's been Bravo, Viscerai and Prism. And then after that, it kind of trickles off. Right. Um, in week one, percentage of overall players, Bravo was at 22%, the new Bravo. Uh, uh, Viscerai was at 14 and Prism was close behind 13%. And then after that, it was kind of trickling. I'm going to also call out Katsu because this is a ninja-based channel. Um, Katsu is at 5.7% of the meta, right? So how did that change from week two? You can't, a lot of people have probably already seen this. So for week one and week two, as you can see, Bravo... Kind of didn't change, still 22%. So it really didn't fall off. People kept saying like, oh, Bravo's going to fall off a little bit. You'll see less play. You really didn't see less play. What you saw is probably people that weren't playing Bravo or playing a different hero moved to Prism, is my guess. <laughs> um, and so, because Bravo stayed at 22%, as you can see, uh, Prism went from 11 to 15%, and then Viscerai went from 15 to 14%. So maybe a bit, couple of Viscerais went to Prism, and then a couple of people in the field went to other stuff. You know, Katsu was even less at 3%, so maybe Katsu, people were seeing Katsu wasn't doing as well, uh, probably from all the Starvo. The Starvo really didn't drop off at all, like at all, not one bit, um, which some people were saying he was going to. I, I don't know why you would. I won't go. This isn't a Starvo soapbox uh, video, but the thing about Starvo that people just aren't like admitting is like, it doesn't matter how well you play against Starvo. I don't care if you're playing his hard counter, like you're playing a heavy ice or taxing deck or even, even a good, good prism deck. It doesn't matter how good you play. If he draws well, the game's over. That's just my opinion. Um, which is why you see a lot of people playing him because no offense. It just doesn't take much of a brain to play him. Um, you literally can just draw cards and, you know, freaking captain planet people, but that's just my opinion. Anyway, uh, week two did not really change much. Stay at 22% for him. Prism went up a little bit. Viscerai went down a little bit. And you saw a lot of the other heroes kind of stay the same. Um, Lexi saw a little bit more play, which is nice to see, right? Uh, as you can see there. And then Chain, let's see what colors changed. Real quick. I changed purple, like a light purple. So he went from 6.9% to 6.4. So you actually saw less play, which is interesting because Chain was doing really well. Um so it's surprising to see kind of like that lesser of play. Uh, and then a lot of the other, a lot of the other, uh, you know, people were just kind of like ins and outs. But so how that affect top eight placings? Well, in top eight placings, right, we saw 22% overall players for Starvo with a 36% top eight. That's a pretty good conversion, right? This ride kind of stayed the same. His conversion actually wasn't as high, you know, 15% of the meta week one, and then he went to 15% of the top eights. That's an okay conversion, but it's not as good as like Starver. Like you can see the difference. And then Prism was at what, 14% or so, 13%, um, and then got 11% of top eights. So a huge difference. Where you saw the biggest change was chain. Again, that's why I was surprised when you saw less chain players, because if you look back, right, like I don't want to, I don't want to skip too much, but uh, with week one percentage of overall players, chain was at 7%, and he got 10% top eights, right? So that's a pretty good conversion, right? It's, it's, the probably ends up being like near the second best conversion after Starbo. So it was really surprising to me not to see a lot of people have that. For week two, it didn't much change, right? Starbo went to 33% of the top eights. But Prism, uh, her conversion went, it just skyrocketed, right? Like she only went up 1% of the overall players for that, for that meta. But for the placing in week two, she went to 20%, you know, so her conversion is a lot better. It's starting to close near Starbo's, um, and Viscerai also did really well too. And then again, Chain getting get to having decent um, conversion as well. But you saw a lot of Prism starting to do well, uh, and Prism was converting really well. Maybe Prisms are starting to figure out how to play against Starvo a little bit more. Um, so I think as time goes on, like what does this mean for the meta? Like the quick answer is we don't know. Obviously, Prism is going to be good in the meta. Starvo is going to be good in the meta. Viscerai is going to be good in the meta. Like that's just a given. Um, I think other 
heroes like Reinar and like Chain, uh, even Katsu, um, as much as he's struggling a little bit, will be really well good in the meta. Uh, once the more the more you see Prism, the more those three heroes start to do really good. Heck, even Briar uh, probably will have a chance at doing a little bit better. A lot of these aggro based decks, if Star Wars starts to die down and Prism starts to, to go up, those aggro based decks are going to be more and more popular and be more and more useful in the meta. So, yeah, top eight placings from week one to week two. Star Wars went from 36 to 33. Prism went from 11 to 20. And Visceride basically stayed the same. He went up from 15 to 16. And then everyone else kind of like suffered from it. Chain went from 10 to 8%, so a little bit less. Uh, you saw a little bit more Briar, but that's about it for the most part. Lexi kind of stayed the same uh, pretty much as well. She went well. She went up pretty significantly, like a percent and a half. But that's the top eight placings, right? So now we get into wins. So how has wins been affected? So this is percentage of wins week one. Obviously, Starvo is dominating the meta. You know, literally half of the wins pretty much he, he had a say in. Um, it was just nuts. Uh, you know, and then you have... Prism, who did really well, had really good conversion on wins, 18%. Viscerai at 9%. The OG Bravo had a couple wins, right? Chain had a couple wins. Um, and even Oldheim had a couple wins. So but overall, it's just a Star Wars Prism at a week one. Week two, it went down a little bit, but it's still a lot. Like after two weeks, the the win percentage for Bravo is we went from 47 to 43. Prism went from, you know, 20-ish, what was it? Freaking 18% to 26%. Um and then Viscerai is at 10, Chain's at 5, and then you have, you know, a couple other ones. Katsu's getting in there. We had two Katsu wins, which was really nice. So basically, you know, 40, 53, 63, 69% of wins were from Prism and Starvo. So basically 7 out of 10 wins were from two heroes, which, you know, you're not going to be able to fully balance the meta out. And people really want, people say they want a rock, paper, scissors meta where every hero is viable, but you really don't want that because in a tournament environment, it's a nightmare because if you go into a tournament knowing like I'm really good against these people, but I literally am pretty much unwinnable against these people, it can get really bad because it's just basically luck on who you draw in the tournament. Anyway, um, Starver is still 43% of the meta. Starver right now is already at like 300 and some living legend points. So before he's even seen a major tournament, he's just going to ProQuest, like a major, major tournament, right? He's already over 30% of the way. You know, a month into his existence, he's over 30% of the way to Living Legend. If that doesn't tell you something needs to be changed about the hero, I don't know what does. No hero should have uh, 60% Living... Like, he's on pace to have 50-60% Living Legend um, before there's even a calling, right? So, I would say 50%. So, it's just... I don't know what could be changed about him because there's not much to change about him. And Prism's getting better, too, so... Who knows? I, at the end of the day, I don't think anything's going to be changed and it's not going to bother me. It's not like chain where it was like this inevitable, unwinnable thing. I just don't like the fact it's it's more of that Starbo's not broken in the fact of like he's a unbeatable, like unplayable against hero, like kind of like chain nearly was. It's more of the fact that it's like I said at the beginning of the video, it's not so much how you play, it's how he play. It's how he draws, right? If, if a star draws well, you can be playing the best prism deck in the world. You're going to probably lose because he's going to make you discard every time. Um, and it just gets really dumb. Like it, it, the game is not fun. Even when you beat Starvo, the game is not fun. And I think that's the biggest telling of some, there's something wrong with the hero is when you beat the hero, the game still was not fun. That's kind of how Briar was, right? Even when you beat her, it wasn't fun to play. So, um, the game's not, perfect and it's never going to be perfect so like i'm not sitting here calling for a ban every time a hero is really good uh but it is kind of interesting but prism definitely rose up in the ranks with her percentage of wins um i think prism will definitely be obviously huge in the meta what this means for me again like i just said a minute ago katsu got a couple wins chain still doing decent wins um you know a deck like reinar got a win you know these all even briar got a win so you're seeing these like aggro decks i think if you wanted to really surprise people not surprise but kind of set yourself up for a big event i would go with any of the aggro based decks whichever one you're most comfortable with ideally probably chain and then after that probably katsu um or briar viscera is an amazing choice too it's just viscera takes a lot of time like you have to know when to play tempo know when to play combo if you have an otk package know when to play otk uh it takes a lot of brain power and i don't mean like don't play heroes that take a lot of brain power, but it's a little bit different, right? So 
But these aggro decks, you know, Prism's going to have a lot of trouble with, especially Chain. Uh, and if Starvo keeps dying down like he is slightly, 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 and gets down to like that 30% of the field margin, then Chain's going to be, I think, a really good pick uh, going into these future events. That's just my opinion. Where Katsu is in the meta, because we're definitely it's Katsu and Ninja Base channel. Um, Katsu's in a weird spot still. Like he's a good deck that it's like a he's like a dark horse deck. He's a deck that isn't gonna consistently do good in this meta right now, but he's also a deck that could win an event just because if he goes into the event and gets matched up with a bunch of prisms and you know a Rhinar and a chain, like he's sitting pretty good, right? He's either favored or even in most of those matchups. So um he's in an interesting spot and in a cool spot honestly so it's be cool to see what happens but yeah these are the difference between week one week two basically starver went down a little bit but still is severely dominating the meta prism's conversion rate went up an insane amount um and viscerai is still really popular he's kind of dying down a little bit but i think a, some viscerai players might have gone over to prism so week two to be honest um but we'll see you never know that's, that's a hard thing in these pro quests you don't know if people are just trying new decks you don't know if people are just net decking you don't know if people you know, legitly or staying on one here no matter what. We don't get a good picture of the meta until we get to these major, major events like Indianapolis and like a calling and stuff like that um, in a pro tour. So we'll see how it goes as the meta develops. But Prism's looking very strong right now and, and Starvo is going to stay strong. Like even if he dies down, he's still going to have like, I think at the worst, Starvo is going to have 35% of the wins, right? That's my guess, but we'll see how it goes. Um, but if you like this video, please let me know. I'll leave a like, comment, subscribe. If not me, go to another Fleshburg career. Leave a like, comment, subscribe for their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. And I'll see you all next time on TC Talk. Thank you all so much.